about what's transpired in the last bunch of years. Um, I just wanted to put down on paper some ideas on kind of how things seem to be going and seem to have gone over the past uh, several decades. And uh, being that the 34S has been uh, rather hot the last couple of years, uh, I just wanted to uh, use it sort of as a milestone in, in, in things and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So um, my talk is called the 34S and the Calculator Way and it sort of talks about um, where things were, where things are, and, and hopefully where things are going. The space bar does okay. um, Looking back on the past, um, two of our most favorite things in history uh, seem to have turned out to be uh, calculator wish lists and uh, lists of what makes HP better, what makes HP different, you know, why do we like them so much. And uh, just two examples there. The first wish list that I could find in the in the uh, HP 65 notes or the PPC journal uh, occurred only a year after the thing was founded. In June 75, there was an article written called Super 65, and uh, it was the first idea of you know what they could do to enhance the 65 and make it better and add lots of lots of goodies. And an example of the other the other kind. Uh, this is a snapshot from uh, the 1990 conference in Chicago when the 48 was introduced, and Bill Wicks wowed everybody with his goodies. And um, on the there were four meetings at that conference, and on the last meeting was the Wednesday night after the weekend uh, of the actual conference in Rolling Meadows, Illinois. Um, a bunch of us, uh, Brian was there, uh, Richard, myself, Ron Johnson, um, Bob Bradley, a.k.a. Captain Kangaroo, and uh, Paul Hubbard were there, and, and, and uh, at that meeting there was a collection of stuff, what makes, uh, you know, what, what makes HP great, so I just thought as an example, uh, this stuff's been going on for a long time. Kind of a an idea of you know that the, the user group is 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 active all, all during this time period. So, you know, typical wish list items, faster, more program memory, more data, <coughs> longer battery life, ex more expandability, I.O., more customizability, larger screens, possibly uh, easier to hold in the hand or, or transport around. Um, and as far as HP differentiators, I kind of grouped them in, you know, the ones that I could think of, I kind of grouped them into three categories, um, documentation, firmware, and hardware. And, you know, firmware examples are RPN, RPL, uh, better accuracy, more ease of use, keystroke efficiency, uh, large function set, uh, a great programming language, customizability, and well thought out set of features. In the hardware category, you know, enter, large enter key, uh, the hardware build quality, key feel, readable screen, uh, and so forth. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time, and it's, it's kind of fun looking back and seeing what, what we were thinking about in the past. So this is my crazy, uh, my crazy graph that I threw together uh, this month. Um, the idea in here is if you're, if you're plotting like a feature set versus time, and uh, the thought is, uh, HP started off, we had no idea what they were doing. Suddenly the HP 35 showed up and everybody was you know, wowed out of their minds. So there's a curve for HP and there's a curve for users. The users are down here when the 35 came out and we're, you know, we're all excited and 65, same thing, and 67 and 41, and then the conferences started happening and all along this time, the, the downward arrows represent HP uh, uh, presenting stuff to the community, saying, here's our stuff, and the community sucking it up and getting all excited and, and you know, just the minds are boggled. So somewhere there's a crossover point in the 4950 age. HP, you know, the, the, calculator, uh, uh, the calculator market starts to change. Uh, HP's goals start to change. Uh, you know, this is obviously as I see it. So, feature sets increase, but they seem to increase at a decreasing rate. Meanwhile, users' demands increase at an increasing rate. So, there's a crossover point, like 1999, 2000. Uh, calculators continue forward, but now 
uh, the users are above HP. So in here where HP was wowing us, here's where we start communicating to HP. Well, this is what we would really like. Um, so here's where we are today. Uh, and HP is still increasing, but their, you know, their, their, you know, the realities of the situation are, are slightly different than when they were when the 41 came out. So, you know, for lack of a better term, maybe it's too harsh. D disposal of the family jewels. Uh, you know, prior to the crossover point, uh, HP produced disruptive machines. They surprised the community, led with new and powerful and unexpected features and the goals were way beyond our expectations. Uh, after the crossover point, the goals began to change due to realities of things like uh, complex problem solving, transitioning over to more powerful platforms, uh, a, different, a different market for calculators such as education, uh, and those users probably require neither state-of-the-art firmware or, nor a bulletproof hardware that would last for 30 years. Um, and comprehensive documentation considered more of a nice to have rather than a must have. Uh, and finally, um, you know, cost cutting due to lower profit expectations. So, you know, the realities of things are where they are, and we still have our, you know, we still have our big, big ideas and fantasies. So, of course, we still want it all. Um, for the diehards, our goals continue upwards, you know, at a higher pace than reality. Uh, we're still looking for bulletproof hardware, smarter firmware. We want to maximize functionality, flexibility, keystroke efficiency, uh, retain enter, RPN, RPL. You know, here's a here's a here's something everybody loves. Um, and and uh, for those who aren't familiar with this book, you, you should get familiar with it. It's a it was also a, a, an 800 and some page labor labor of love. Speaking of documentation. Okay, Pilati, is that are any of those books in your box? Uh, I don't have any copies of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's too thick. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I updated in the last few years. <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we certainly would like to retain some form of enter RPN, RPL for back of the napkin calculations. Um, we're looking for great manuals, uh, super reference material, and uh, you know, the best documentation that, that's available. And, and certainly uh, ways to communicate with the outside world. So what happened? What did the community do? Uh, uh, thanks to Cyril Tim and the HP team, uh, the 20B and 30B financial machines were made in a platform that was, uh, re that was repurposable, which is, you know, we're extremely thankful for that. And thanks to Walter, Paul, and, and Marcus, uh, and mm -hmm all the museum forum readers and participants, uh, they turned a 20B or 30B into a WP34S. It was kind of like, well, if they won't do it, let's try to do it ourselves. So um, the 34S is probably the first good example of the user community saying, well, we want to keep on going and enhance this. Let's just make it happen. So just for those that are not familiar, and I, I assume that there's a few people in here that are not familiar with the 34S, um, achievements of the machine, uh, huge functional uh, function arsenal, uh, RPN style programming language, relative ease of use, uh, multiple shifts to uh, increase keystroke efficiency, um, super fast speed because of the fast CPU, uh, four user keys for limited customizability, extremely high accuracy and, and high dynamic range um, and uh, firmware to handle an optional crystal if you want to if you want to build a timer into the thing and also uh, I guess one of the more recent uh, changes were uh, some people figured out how to add and how to add an IR LED so we could communicate and print to the infrared printer and uh, space and space and flash for memory backup she almost came to the conference and talked to her coming. Which one? Katie. Katie Wasserman. Oh, uh, okay. I really wanted to have her here, but yeah. she, she's moving, physically moving. And, and uh, so uh, let's just talk a little bit about limitations of 34S. Um, and, and we understand those limitations because the platform design goals were certainly not for, for what the 34S does. 
Um, the LCD has a limited dot matrix display with one line and a segment display on the other line. Uh, so if you're interested in soft keys like 42 or 17B2+, plus, they're not, we're not able to do that. Um, small memory on board with, you know, without easy uh, expandability, no plugins, uh, no native standard I.O. and um, the, the cables for uh, uh, burning uh, firmware upgrades are uh, of, of limited quantities and we're running out rapidly. Um, there'll probably be a little more discussion about that later. And um, the keys on the keyboard must be, you know, physically modified uh, in order to change the functionality. You've got to stick on stuff. So where do we go from here? Um, the 39G2 is, is, you know, the latest uh, high-powered HP uh, platform, and hopefully we'll hear some more about that. Um, it's significantly more powerful than the 20B, 30B system in a lot of ways. It's got a super high-resolution display. Um, if repurposing was achievable, I think, uh, you know, the sky would be the limit on this box. Um, and, of course, there are other, other homebrew projects uh, that will, you know, at least one of which we'll probably hear uh, this weekend. So this is, this is another kind of zany chart that, that I kind of threw together. Um, if you think about the user community working with these machines and how they enhance their use of the machines, you could start with the 35 and the 45, and you talk about like a, a repeated keystroke sequence. And I remember back in those days, books were published like the HP 35 Math Pack, which simply was a list of repeated keystroke sequences to achieve several goals, since the machines are not programmable. Um, and, and, and everything after that can obviously do repeated keystroke sequences from something on paper. Finally, uh, we got the capability to write calculated user programs with the 65 and the 67 and the 41 and everything after that. And then uh, moving, moving further forward to uh, being able to customize an entire module or an applet or a library will fall in the category of the 41, the PPC ROM, the 48, the uh, 39G. Uh, and so forth. And then the fourth step would be custom calculator firmware, such as the 34, WP34S. And uh, last but not least, uh, I guess we're, we, we possibly would be up to a custom calculator from scratch. So we hope that uh, something's going to happen with that, and maybe we'll hear some more this, this weekend. So finally, um, you know, we're, we're the lunatic fringe. We're permanently on different paths than HP at this point. We know we're going up and, you know, at, at a faster rate than HP probably is. Uh, we're likely going to have to do it ourselves from here on in. Uh, to, you know, it'll continue to be a labor of love. It'll continue to not make any money. Uh, but it'll be a uh, significant achievement. And, you know, you'll have a couple hundred people extremely proud. <laughs> Um, the 34S team worked miracles and showed how it could be done, and bravo, certainly bravo to them. Another example, Monty Dalrymple's 41CL project is what I call serious homebrew magic. And, um, and you know, we say thanks to HP for the great ride. Hopefully more great rides are ahead, and uh, there you have it. Any uh, questions or comments? What about the, the firmware? The 392 <coughs> repurposing stuff, if you would like. Sure. So we have absolutely no problem with anybody repurposing the unit. The issue is the way these modern embedded systems work, they're just so incredibly complicated. Um, we have absolutely no idea exactly how a lot of the stuff in there works. The manufacturer doesn't, because everyone who made that chip left the company. Um, you know, they purchased this company for IP, um, just wanted to get some of the things in there. So there's a lot of things in there. We don't have any idea how it works. The company doesn't have any way to support it. Um, we can't release the operating system that they gave us. We don't have permission to do that. You have to have a full, complete operating system to start running that chip. Okay? We don't have anything that we can give out to the community to say, here you go, you can start repurposing it. So it essentially becomes a start from the beginning project. And that gets very, very, very complicated. I mean, something like the, the 34S, 
you know, we were able to release just some very, very basic stuff, and you could get a program running. It took us about two to three months to get anything running on that device. And that was with provided operating system, with all this information we had. So it's definitely possible, um, but you essentially have to start from scratch. And that really, really makes things much, much more difficult. So Eric's glaring at me. Can't, I can't comment on the particulars of that, but I know from, from experience that sometimes software supplied by the vendor is a hindrance rather than a help. I, I will agree with that 100%, yes. Uh, but you know we don't we don't have anything we can give you that's but we're not against it in any way shape or form so do you see any any efforts or situations or even particular vendors that, that this could change or is it going to get more and more in, intricate and, and complicated to the point where very few people can, can do anything with it it's not so much that very few people can do it it's just a question of time I mean, we could definitely port over the operating system that we use on the 50G, but our best estimates is that's several months worth of work. And when you know you present to the managers and say, we've got several months worth of work, and then we would have this full stack that we understand completely and can control, and the response is always, well, what's that going to do in terms of improving our sales? You know, it, it always comes down to that, and that's just the reality of modern business. Um, and you know we have to answer truthfully and say, well, it really doesn't impact the sales a great amount. And so then, of course, you know, well, we've got other projects that are much more important that we need you guys working on. But we continually are trying to push for these types of things. And you know, that the 20B, 30B definitely was a lot of work for Cyril to run through to get that capability built in there. And so we're, as enthusiasts, always constantly trying to allow that and support that but unfortunately, we can't always do so. I that was your one question, Richard. Save it for later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it up during Sunday. Okay. Okay. I have one question. Yes. Uh, you have are you implying that the HP th the 39 is in fact what you see is what you get, and even HP is stuck with the firmware they have now? And no, it, so it, it's not. It's rather that the underlying system that our application runs on, you can think of it more that way, that there's a provided operating system. We have the ability to customize to some extent, but to do extensive customization to potentially allow us to release operating systems that the user can install their own applications and things like that, it's just beyond our reach at this point. So it's not that it's stuck and we can't do anything about it, it's just we have this limitation, our application is running on top of that. We really want to change the lower level behaviors. It's just a much, much larger project. Mm -hmm. I think we get an idea. Thank you. The 34. <coughs> the 34S firmware, is that stable now? Are there any new releases planned for that? It seems relatively stable. Uh, I guess they're up to officially up to version 3. Um, from what I can tell, it, it, they're, they're basically just <coughs> fixing bugs at this point and not, not too much activity. And I don't think the bugs are coming in at any, you know, near as high rate as there have been in the past. So it seems relatively stable to me. And uh, I guess there'll be more talk on the 34S a little bit later. Uh, WP, does that stand for work in progress? or what? for uh, Walter and Pauly. <laughs> <laughs> work in progress is good as well. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Jake.